Hello. Can you hear me all right at the back? Is that all right? Can you hear me? Any nods? Yep, yeah, good. Brilliant. Um, I'm sorry to be the last person on the agenda. I'm sure you're all feeling quite overwhelmed because what a lot of information we have been through today. I think my talk is a little bit easier to digest than some, I hope. Um, I'm, I'm one of the founders of QDOS. We've been around for about five years and we're a service that is very specifically focused on trying to help you increase the reach and the impact of your work. Um, and we do that in a context uh, where, as you will know, um, academia I is under pressure. Um, in most countries, funding is, um, has become constrained. Winning grants is increasingly competitive. We've talked about that today already. Um, and yet more and more research is taking place. Um, we've talked about that today already. And, and um, both in terms of, as a reader, trying to keep up with the literature, but also when you publish, trying to make sure that people do find and read your work is becoming ever harder. And yet you're expected to do that. You're increasingly expected to find an audience for your work and to broaden the audience for your work. Um, and, and there's this growing demand for public engagement with research, even uh, public accountability for research. So there's a lot of pressure, um, as I'm sure you are well aware. And that is the context um, in which we set up QDOS. We wanted to try and um, cut through all of that and provide people with very practical tools and guidance to help you navigate this, this new world. Um, and obviously there are a lot of things that you can do to increase the impact of your work. And again, we've talked a lot about some of this today. And part of the challenge from your perspective um, is that how do you know what you should be doing? Um, this is from a survey that I did last year and we had about 3,000 respondents. Um, and it gives you a sense of the kinds of things that uh, people are experimenting with um, in terms of how to try and make sure their work gets out there. So obviously the more um, established and well-known ways of disseminating your research are at the top of the list, um, and those would all be things that I'm sure uh, you're familiar with. And then as you go down through the less popular ones, you can see the other kinds of things that people are trying to experiment with. And again, I think the challenge that we've been trying to tackle at QDOS is that it's all very well experimenting, but how do you know which of those experiments, which of those efforts to disseminate your work are actually increasing the number of people who read it or cite it or apply it and all those important metrics rather than just um, liking it or turning up to an event about it. Um, and again, we've touched on that theme already today. <laughs> Um, and a big part of what we talk about, and again, that others here talk about, is, is about the meaningful metrics um, and, and working out what it is that you will consider to be impact for your work and how you can measure that. Um, and there's many different types of impact, obviously. Again, we've touched on this. It's brilliant. All of my work has been done for me today. Um, so we've talked about academic impact, which I've got at the top there. That's standing on the shoulders of giants, obviously. Um, and then there's economic impact and policy impact and societal impact, um, cultural impact and so on. Um, when we were looking at this, when we founded QDOS and were trying to think about how to help people towards all these kinds of impact, what we kept coming back to was um, that whatever kind of impact you seek to achieve, uh, people can't apply your work, they can't cite your work, they can't benefit from your work if they can't find it and if they can't read it. Um, so for me, it starts with making sure that you're doing everything you can to increase the number of people who can find your work um, and who do read it, because that is what will need to lead to a greater number of people than applying it and citing it and benefiting from it. So that's why I kind of put the publication at the center of things. Over time, as again we've discussed today, that is going to change. The publication is going to become less pivotal, I hope, and other kinds of research outputs will become more important, more trackable, and be able to um, contribute more directly to impact. But still, I think at the moment, the publication is very pivotal, and hence that's why I'm focusing on that now. We've talked so much about metrics today that I'm not sure it's helpful for me to go back through them again, other than to, to reinforce the point that there are many different kinds of metrics. You will care about different metrics for different reasons in different contexts. 
So consider them as separate things rather than trying to play them off against each other. They don't necessarily correlate to each other. Some will be more important in some contexts than others. Citations are obviously the most well-known and well-established um, and are the most sought after in many fields. Um, but all of these other metrics have value um, and will tell you something about how your work is being perceived by other people. Um, so do take the time to learn about metrics. Um, and do also, I think, um, try to understand how your own actions and your own behaviours are influencing those metrics. And again, that's, that's one of the things we've set QDOS up to do, um, is to try and join the dots, literally, in this diagram. Um, you know, you might choose to let people know about your work by emailing them. Um, make sure that that's something you can track to see whether that is creating more discussion about your work or leading to more downloads of your work. Or you might focus on just presenting at conferences or blogging um, or using social media or academic networks. Everybody has their own um, preferred way of, and, and uh, as uh, Nicola was saying in the digital footprint session, communities exist in lots of different places. So there's no simple answer to the question of where should you be promoting your work. But the one thing you should be trying to do is tracking whatever you do in a way that then enables you to understand whether the effort that you've put into that promotion has been worthwhile. And you can't just measure that in terms of, well, I posted it on Twitter and 50 people liked it, because what does a like mean? How has that actually ensured that your research has gone further? So you need to be able to correlate that through to things like readership of your work and citations. Um, and QDOS is, is a management tool for that, to be clear. And what I'm now going to do is just talk a bit more about how it works. Um, this actually is a really nice point in terms of some of the discussions we've had today about metrics and what's worthwhile and how you can explain to the people around you why you're spending time on this kind of thing. Um, one of the best outcomes um, and one of the things I'm most um, proud of, in a way, since having started QDOS is that we've built up a really big data set of how researchers communicate and where they do that and what effect that has on metrics. And a team from uh, the Nanyang Technological University in Singapore last year took all the data that we'd compiled to that point and analysed it. Um, so they took uh, 5,000 articles for which the QDOS toolkit had been used um, and they looked at the downloads of those articles on publisher websites. And then they compared that to 5,000 similar articles for which the QDOS tools hadn't been used. And what they were able to see was that when the QDOS tools had been used, i.e. when people were promoting their work, they had 23% higher growth in the downloads, the readership of those publications. And that's obviously great for QDOS, but it's really good for science communications, research communications in general, because now that we can start to track all of this and quantify it, we can start to feed back into academia the, the evidence that it's worthwhile spending a bit of time communicating your research because it will increase the metrics that matter. It isn't just vanity tweeting. It isn't just wasting time writing blogs or doing events. It will actually lead to that meaningful results that the more old-fashioned among us might be more focused on. So a quick look then at how QDOS works. Um, you can, it's a free site for researchers. You can sign up for free at growqdos.com slash register. So write that down, remember that, and I'll show it again at the end. Um, and it's a really simple process. It takes about 15 minutes to get yourself set up and do this for the first time for the first article. Um, or, or book chapter or whatever, and then it's about 10 minutes every time you publish something new. Um, once you've registered, it's really easy to find your publications because we have a search that actually searches the Crossref system that Rachel was talking about earlier, or we've mentioned ORCIDs a couple of times today, which is a, a research identifier where you can list all your publications. If you've already got an ORCID, you can connect your QDOS and ORCID accounts and that all your publications will just feed automatically into QDOS. So it's very quick and easy to find your publications. You don't have to manually enter anything. Um, once you have found your publication, uh, 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 it gets an uh, uh, automatically created profile page. Um, and here you can add a plain language explanation of it. So again, we've talked a lot today about lay summaries and plain language explanations and impact statements. And QDOS is one of the places that, you, that those can live. So you can create a, a, a plain language explanation that tells people what is your work about and why is it important. And it's really focused on that because when we started the company and we talked to researchers about 
trying to keep up with the literature, what would help you work your way through more of the publications that you're trying to keep up with? And people said, oh, if just for all the articles that I'm trying to read, there was just a quick statement of what's it about and why is it important, and then I would know whether to put it onto my pile to read or my pile to put on the shelf for later. So that's how we structured it, and that's why we asked those questions like that. Um, and this is an example from uh, Michelle Tobias. She was doing her PhD at, I think it was UC Davis, um, and she published this article, which is about uh, California Fordium plant biogeomorphology. Anybody got any idea? Maybe some of you will be experts in that area, but that's not a word, biogeomorphology, that I had ever heard or knew what it meant. But she adds a simple title saying, this is about how plants work together to build sand dunes. And then she goes on to explain that. And immediately it brings it to life. I get interested in it. I can start to understand it. Um, it's just tempted me forward. That's the abstract for the article. I don't expect you to be able to read that. That's sort of the point. It's quite long. It's got lots of detail, not only about the work <laughs> itself, but about the limitations of the study or the methods of the study all of which is important stuff. The abstract has got an important job to do. It's not what the, what the first thing is I want to know. What I want to know first is just what's this about and why it's important. And she summarises that really compellingly by talking about plants as superheroes and how they work together. And really simple language, really compelling, brings it to life. Immediately I'm hooked. And the advantages of that plain language approach are, are many. Many people benefit when you describe your work in plain language. Um, as I've said, people within the field can find it easier to quickly skim and scan through what you're talking about and to sort of triage the literature. Um, people outside the field, but also in academia, who might benefit from aspects of your work, will now be able to more quickly keep up with what you're publishing. And if they're not so conversant with the technology of your field, the terminology of your field, they'll now have a better understanding of what you're talking about. But there's also, of course, audiences outside academia, whether that's practitioners or the media or the general public, depending on your field, there will be all sorts of audiences who can now get a better handle on what you're saying. It also helps your institution and your publisher and people who um, can help to promote your work and who are charged to some extent with building the visibility of your work but may not be such specialists. It now gives them an in and helps them to understand it and helps them to communicate it more accurately and effectively on your behalf. Um, and get the media more excited about it. Um, and then finally, in the context of open access, which too has come up a lot today, obviously, people who can now access your work might have a better hope of understanding it. Um, and there's a lot of research out there which backs up uh, the value of doing plain language summaries, both um, in terms of academic impact and beyond. I'll make these slides available so you can look at that. Um, also on the publication page, here's my wake up, it's nearly the end of the day slide big picture of uh, baboons, you can add all the resources around your work. So um, any other things, code, data, images, videos, um, in, uh, um, interviews, radio stuff, you can link to all of that. So this is Claudia Sick. Her work is about um, how baboons are nice to each other in the morning because they're building up goodwill, knowing that they will be grumpy later on in the day. And uh, she has got a lot of media coverage of that work, not surprisingly. So she's linked that all together on QDOS. So that now she's got a hub, one place where all of that stuff is linked together. And it kind of keeps the article alive as well, because she can keep adding to that with stuff that's happened after publication. Um, and then the uh, part of the process where you, you use QDOS to manage your sharing of your work. So here, we just generate a trackable link for you. And you can either... Um, post that into social media, so there's me actually filling in the Twitter box there, um, and you can send that out, so you can connect up Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and actually post to them directly from within QDOS. Um, if you're not a big social media user, um, you can also just click generate link, and you can copy that and paste it into an email or a presentation or uh, a blog or um, anything else that you might want to use to share it. So it's really easy to just get your trackable link um, and post it out however you normally communicate. Um, and obviously you might be thinking, well, I could just generate a trackable link or I could just post it to those channels anyway. The advantage of doing it through QDOS is that then 
we've tracked it for you and we map it against all of your metrics. So we're now able to show you, here's how many times you've communicated your work, here's how many people clicked on those links, here's how many people viewed the page you created, here's how many people clicked through to read that work, here's the altmetric score, here's the time cited count. So if you've been bewildered by all the metrics we've talked about today and feverishly taking notes and trying to think about getting them, you can come to QDOS and get them all in one place for any publication from any publisher and have that also mapped against what you have done to communicate, which is really unique and is the sort of um, completing the circle in terms of being able to manage this stuff effectively. And we then map it too onto these graphs that actually show you there's the point at which you've taken an action, that's what you did, um, and it also breaks it down so that you can see the different places you communicated and which of those was more or less effective. Which Was it LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook where more people clicked on my links? And it shows you all of that. So you can really start to um, refine your efforts and see, OK, I've been building networks in all these places, but actually um, my Twitter traffic isn't that good. Surprisingly, it's Facebook where all my traffic is coming from, and that's where I should put my effort and my time rather than continuing to spread myself thinly across everything. Um, and it doesn't take long, 15 minutes, um, get lots more readers, sign up for free at growqdos.com, and we're just about to launch um, a competition and a game which will take you through, actually really relevant today, all sorts of aspects of building the impact of your work from the point of planning onwards. So it goes through and asks, asks you lots of questions about the things that you do and the, the tools that you're using and the support you get and what you're aware of and then gives you a score about how good your reset, research impact strength is and then you can compare yourself to other people. So that's launching next week. If you sign up now, you'll be notified and you'll be the first people who get to play that game. Thank you very much.